Good morning, everyone. We'll uh, get started in just a couple of minutes, give uh, people a, a little bit longer to join, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll get going. We've got a few more people trickling in, so uh, just one more minute and then, then we'll start. Okay, let's get going. So um, first of all, thank you for joining us and for taking the time out of your busy Friday. We really appreciate your, your attendance here. Um, so today we'll be talking about Copilot uh, and the new planner uh, and what all of this means and uh, how you can actually be a little bit more productive using some of the tools that Microsoft are bringing into uh, the core set of functionality. So. Uh, just by way of introduction, um, who are CPS? Why us? Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons why us. Uh, we are uh, the leading UK partner um, in the UK uh, for everything to do with project, program, portfolio management, uh, recognized by Microsoft. This year, we were actually awarded uh, the 2024 uh, finalist award for Partner of the Year for the good work that we've done. Uh, if you're not aware, um, every year there's a, a, a nomination process. Um, this year there were 4,700 uh, nominated partners globally, uh, and CPS was one of the uh, four to finish uh, either as a winner or as a finalist. So we got a finalist award there for, um, for project and portfolio management, which was a great accolade. Uh, and we can share some information if you're interested around uh, what it was we did and how we did it. Uh, there are case studies up on our website, so please feel free to go and check those out if you haven't. Um, we have uh, all the relevant solution designations with Microsoft, uh, which is effectively a, a badge that says, we know what we're talking about. We have consultants who are accredited in the uh, specializations, so modern work, security, and business applications. Um, that is things like um, dynamics and power uh, power platform security with things like purview and uh, everything that goes around keeping your Microsoft 365 tenant secure uh, and then modern work is everything to do with working in modern ways whether it's project and portfolio management uh, it's co-pilot for Microsoft 365 it's SharePoint and intranets anything to do with that technology step we also consult in uh, as well as and provide solutions through technology. Uh, we do also have a business consulting arm uh, where we can help you understand uh, how to optimize, how to make your PMOs more efficient, or if you don't have a PMO, uh, perhaps how we can help you land one, embed one, um, review existing processes, uh, and help you make yourselves a little bit more efficient. So lots of stuff that we do across Microsoft uh, 365. Uh, and a few examples of who we have worked with. Um, so I'm not going to read all of these names. There's uh, there's far too many in here for me to go through. Uh, but we work across sector. So whether it's um, it's medical or NHS, 
whether it's defense or defense related, uh, utilities, banking, uh, education, um, you know, financial uh, environment, we work across uh, the entire sectors. And then uh, what do we do? So we, we work across uh, everything. So I've mentioned this briefly already, um, whether it's cloud transformation, modern unified comms, cybersecurity, business apps, digital culture, including things like Viva and Engage and Teams and Insights uh, and goals linking your delivery to strategy uh, or modern work management, which is what we're talking about here today with Plan. Uh, and who am I? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure looking through the list of names attending today that I've met a few of you before. So lovely to see you again. Uh, hopefully you're not tired of my face yet. Uh, so I'm Lester, I'm the head of practice here at CPS for Modern Work Management, uh, which is a really grand title. Effectively, what it means is I look after everything to do with planning modern work uh, in the Microsoft technology stack. So if there is work happening in your organization, we have a technology answer to help support that and a consulting answer to perhaps make you uh, a little bit more efficient. Uh, so I look after the team of consultants who implement uh, technology and consult in these, these offerings and consult in this space. Um, I've been at CPS for 19 years now, which is a really long time. Um, I started on the service desk here at CPS and I've kind of worked my way through. Uh, and uh, about two years ago, I was appointed uh, head of practice uh, for this department. So really great place to work. Um, I've been here 19 years. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't change it at all. Um, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, please feel free. You can scan the code that's uh, up on screen now. Just point your camera at it uh, and feel free to drop me a LinkedIn connection. I do post semi-regularly um, on all sorts of interesting and wonderful things, including why CPS is amazing and why you should work with us. So if you need any more convincing, uh, please connect uh, and feel free to uh, to have a chat, start a dialogue with me. So what are we talking about today then? Well, today we're talking about the new planner and we're talking about collaborative and enterprise work management, but also we'll be talking about Copilot. So first of all, a, a brief um, potted history of how we got to where we are. Uh, so some of you on the call may be using some of the more established or legacy tools like Project Online. Some of you may be using things like uh, Excel or To Do um, or you know no tools at all. Uh, wherever you're at in your work management journey, in your maturity to getting a grip on everything that's going on in your organization, Microsoft has an answer for you now. Uh, and that's really what this, uh, this update is about. So Microsoft see uh, work management now as a two real buckets of, um, of work, um, whether it is collaborative work management, uh, which is kind of individual or small tasks or team projects, maybe visual boards, maybe some goals that you're trying to uh, align around and you want to achieve. Um, this is what Microsoft call collaborative work management. Uh, you may have people in your organization who manage work but aren't necessarily project managers. Maybe they're given small projects or little initiatives that they want to get to grips with. Um, Microsoft has an answer for that. And the other side of the coin that Microsoft um, look at uh, is enterprise work management. So enterprise work management is your more established, more professional, more governed uh, work. And that could be things like, you know, real formal projects that you want to put a bit of a governance life cycle around. Maybe you want to make sure that it goes through stage gates, that it gets sign offs, that maybe you even need a business case to start this stuff up. Uh, and in that space, you might want to start looking at doing uh, more formal methodologies like portfolio management with uh, MOP or Agile or Scrum or Kanban or uh, detailed resource management. Maybe you're connecting your, um, your professional projects or your more formal projects back to objectives and key results or, or to strategy all up. And you want a method for doing that. Again, Microsoft has some answers uh, around how that works. Um, some interesting stats now that I'm going to uh, share with you, uh, which is about the state of collaborative work management across uh, organizations. So Microsoft ran uh, a bit of a, a, an insight, a bit of a, a process. They set out uh, a whole bunch of uh, questions and uh, came back with some responses. Uh, and those responses were pretty insightful, actually. So 
In organizations that were interviewed, 59% of employees who were questioned said that their collaboration tools aren't aligned with how their teams prefer to work, uh, which I find absolutely amazing. So we're delivering tools to our, to our teams, but it's not how people actually want to work. So for me, the upshot of that really is that there's going to be very low compliance and low adoption, or at least huge amounts of resistance to, uh, to doing things the way that uh, you're asking them to do. 64% of employees who were interviewed said that their current tools don't integrate with organizational processes, which again is crazy. Um, why are you embedding tools as a, as a silver bullet, if you like, uh, that don't integrate with the way you actually operate as a business? You should either adapt the tools or adapt the process. In my opinion, you should always adapt the tools to be compatible with your organizational processes if they're embedded within your organization. And then finally, 72% of employees uh, wished that their collaboration tools were compatible with one another. Uh, so this is kind of symptomatic of lots of tools being brought in. Maybe there's not a, an entire ecosystem. Maybe your tools don't talk to each other. Um, there are lots of reasons why um, tools are kind of standalone. And for me, the most part, it's, well, we brought something in and it's legacy and then someone else wanted to do another little initiative or this department brought something in or we got a new CEO and they use something before and you kind of get led down a path where you have a whole ecosystem of tools that really don't talk to each other because they're from completely different vendors or, or they've never been uh, built in anything but isolation. So lots of interesting stats there. Um, how are Microsoft uh, addressing this then? Well, um, in the current Microsoft 365 environment, um, what they're saying is uh, you may have work that's managed in to-do in Planner or in Project for the Web or even in parochial uh, other systems. Well, what Microsoft are actually doing at the minute is bringing all of that work together uh, under a new, uh, a new banner with a whole bunch of new tech that supports all of that. Uh, and that new banner, that new tech uh, is what Microsoft are calling the new Planner. So the new Microsoft Planner will enable you to pull together uh, work from to do, from uh, Outlook, uh, from other task management systems like Project for the Web or Project Online, uh, or even DevOps in some cases, if you want to integrate it that way uh, and bring it all under one area. And I'll show you uh, in a little demo in a minute how some of that hangs together, how that works. So they're pitching this as being simple enough to have everything in a single place, uh, flexible enough to work in the way that you want to work. And I'll show you some of this in a minute. Uh, scalable, so starting really small, scaling up to larger enterprise projects, that whole collaborative to enterprise work management journey, uh, and intelligent enough through AI to um, help you be more efficient, to get you focused on the things that actually deliver results, not the day-to-day -day drudgery uh, of admin tasks. Uh, and what does that look like then in terms of the platform? So. Uh, in the collaborative work management space, we're talking about Planner and the Planner app in Teams. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, and then in the an enterprise work management uh, area, there is a Planner Power app. And that is for your more uh, formal work management um, with governance and all that kind of stuff. And I'll show you some of that shortly as well. Um, aligned to all of that is Copilot. Um, you may have heard Microsoft mentioning Copilot once or twice. It has been in the press a little bit. Um, there are over 80 Copilots now, which is uh, I find absolutely amazing. Um, 80 Copilots across the entire ecosystem of uh, applications. Um, the big one you've probably heard of is the Microsoft 365 Copilot. So that's Copilot for Office and Word and Excel and, and all of that good stuff. So that's a single license to get you um, Copilot within uh, the Microsoft Office sphere. Um, what we'll be talking about today is Copilot in Planner. Uh, and then there's a, a bit in the bottom right there, Microsoft Dataverse. You may not have heard of that. And what it is, is the storage engine for all of this stuff. So regardless of where your data is sitting uh, or, or put into, uh, it will be stored in Microsoft Dataverse. For those of you who aren't aware, it's uh, effectively a cloud storage solution. It's effectively a database um, in the system, but uh, these tools use Dataverse to store that data. So a bit about the, the Planner Power App. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I will do a demo. 
Um, it is effectively, like I said, that um, overarching portfolio um, view of everything that's going on. It's a place to put all of your projects, your programs, your requests for new ideas, your risks, your issues, everything around project program and portfolio management uh, can go into the Planner Power App. Um, so the view that you're looking at here uh, is effectively a, a row per project. And we've just configured this to have some KPIs uh, related to how things are going. So overall time, cost, quality, resource, uh, and giving your project managers a method for scoring those. And I'll give you a bit of a, an overview of that in a moment. Uh, it also includes some scheduling capability. It's not just a top level piece. So you can have grid views for your data where you can add tasks and summary tasks and milestones as you'd expect with any planning tool. Uh, but in the spirit of being flexible enough to work the way people want to work, Microsoft have also enabled you to have board views where you can do kind of Kanban, swim lane, moving stuff between buckets or sprints, uh, and also Gantt charts as well to uh, do your more formal, who doesn't love a Gantt chart, uh, project management visualization. So you can visualize your dependencies and link activities and all of that good stuff as well. Uh, I will show you some of this just as a click through. Uh, if you're interested in a bit more around the Planner Power App, if you're interested in uh, getting a bit more of an, a deep dive demo, please do connect with us. Please do reach out. We're more than happy to, to give you a 45 minute an hour run through of what it is and how uh, we have delivered this to customers. Uh, as well. So a uh, bit of a demo then. I'm going to touch first of all uh, on a little bit about the tools that I've just talked about. So I'll be running through uh, a bit of the Planner app in Teams and then I'll be running through a little bit of the uh, Planner Power app as well and how we can uh, get into that. Um, just before we dive into a demo I'll just check some questions. Uh, Safi Montgomery can't hear anything. Um, hopefully that's being resolved. I see Stella's responded to that. Um, please do let us know if you still can't. Uh, not sure what would be going on there. Uh, anyone else having any issues? Please ra raise your hand if you can't have it, if you don't hear me at all. Um, we, we can try and troubleshoot that. We did test it before. Hopefully you're, uh, you're all okay. Nope, no more raised hands. Okay, we'll press on. Uh, so some of the out-of-the-box features, uh, and then we'll move into the Planner Power App. So let me pull up the correct screen. Here we are. <clears throat> so in this example, uh, I'm just using uh, the Teams browser here. Uh, so uh, purely because otherwise I'd be getting spammed within my organization with a whole bunch of questions and so on. Uh, so this is Teams uh, in the web. Uh, and what you're looking for is this application here called Planner. If you don't have this in your environment, uh, you can check by going to the uh, Add Apps button here. Um, and then you can just uh, type in the uh, apps and more, start typing and find Planner in there. And you should see it here from Microsoft. Uh, I've already got it installed, so it says open rather than add, uh, but that should get it into your environment. So a bit about this then. Um, what Microsoft have done, as I said, is they are pulling data from multiple sources now into the Planner app in Teams, which is great because this is where most people, um, most people spend their day to day in Teams. I don't know about you, but uh, since the big C word, COVID, um, my day has almost become back-to-back -back meetings. I spend most of my time in Teams, uh, collaborating with customers, with my team internally, and with my colleagues. Um, so Teams is really the beating heart of, of everything around what's going on in your day. Uh, Microsoft have enabled that through a few different cuts of the data. So your My Day, for example, uh, this will show you what you've got planned today. And this will pull together um, tasks from to do, tasks from Planner for Microsoft 365, tasks for the new from the new Planner, which you may uh, know as Project for the Web, and also any uh, flagged tasks uh, or emails that you've put up in, uh, in Outlook. So it's going to pull together a whole bunch of different work management tools, again, under this single banner. Uh, they are looking at, by the way, at extending this into other applications, uh, not quite yet. Uh, but that's what uh, what we've got at the moment. 
So your my day will show you things that you're meant to be working on today. And you can configure this, you can add tasks to your, your plan for today um, from any source. So for example, if in my tasks list, these are all tasks that are assigned to me, um, I want to work today on building the prototype, I can uh, add this to my day and then it will appear in my my day view as well. And it will stay there until I've completed it. It will always be a task in my day until I've said it's done. Uh, so I get a whole bunch of tasks in the My Tasks view as well. Um, what I get in here is everything, if I go to All. Um, private tasks, that's tasks that I've marked as things that are very private to me and I don't want anyone else to see them or share them. Uh, tasks that are assigned to me in any of those uh, applications that I've talked about, but also flagged emails. So if I had something that I'd flagged in my inbox, uh, it would appear in here as well. So these are the My, uh, my Tasks. And with any of these, I can come in and I can see a bit more detail. Uh, I can edit these fields if I want to. I can have a look at uh, a detail pane. So this manufacturing task here, I can see uh, it's created by someone on the 17th of June. Uh, I can add labels to it. I can make some uh, progress. I can say it belongs in a certain progress bucket. Uh, or I can add my own notes or descriptions or add attachments to this as well. Um, or I could just be really simple and, and say this is now complete. Uh, if I were to tick this box here, it would then disappear from the My Tasks view. That is now a done task. Um, what it will do as well is play a very pleasing little sound, a little ting, uh, and then uh, get a little dopamine hit. You've done something. Congratulations. Well done. Uh, and you move on with the rest of your day. Uh, in the relation to pulling all your tasks into my day, do you know when Microsoft will be rolling this out to non-standard environments? Our organization environment is not generic, so this feature has not been pulled through, as I believe this will be done at a further date. Microsoft has not said when. You're absolutely right. They haven't said when yet. Uh, we are also waiting on that. Um, we have fortnightly conversations with Microsoft uh, as a partner, uh, and we are asking that question every fortnight. When is this coming to non-standard environments? Uh, so as soon as we know, we will be posting it up, Omar. Thank you for the question. That's a, that's a really good one. OK, um, my plans. So these are plans that uh, you may be working on, again, whether it's in um, three, uh, Microsoft 365 uh, Planner or it's in Project for the Web Planner, a new planner, whatever Microsoft are calling that. Um, they will appear in this um, in this My Plans list. Uh, you have recent stuff, stuff you've opened or uh, accessed or edited recently, uh, stuff that's been shared with you. That's the shared area here. Uh, personal things. So if you've created, you know, simple uh, planner boards, they'll be in your personal area. Uh, or stuff that you've pinned yourself. Or the My Teams areas, uh, anything that you've saved to a Teams channel. So your My Plans. Uh, gives you that full list and you can drill through to these and go and have a detailed look. Um, I've pinned a few items in here, so that's going to show me um, everything that I've got in there. So that's kind of the out of the box um, planner app and that's uh, how those different work management tools feed into there. Um, moving on slightly now to the planner power app. Uh, so what I'm showing you here uh, I'll just give it a quick refresh because it's been open for a few minutes. Um, what you're seeing here is the screenshot that I showed you earlier. So this is the enterprise work management area that I talked about. Uh, this is uh, the planner power up here. So it's a model driven app. This comes as part of what was Project for the Web, now the new planner, uh, but not this much detail. So this is a configured environment that we've built in. I'm not going to go through every single thing that's in here because it, it takes quite a bit to go through all of these tabs and all of these uh, features and functions. Uh, but what I will show you is some of the highlights here. So you've seen this view before in the screenshot. Uh, this is the top level uh, list of projects. You can set up uh, filters and views in here to make sure that you're seeing the data that you're interested in. So for example, if I want to see uh, items where Sam is a sponsor, maybe I can pre-can my own view here and use this bit of metadata to go and see Sam's items. Uh, I can personalize any of these as well. So I can add my own filters in here. Uh, I can find you know, certain project managers or just my projects, and then I can save those views for me. 
Uh, what I'm going to do for now, though, is drill through into one of those projects. Uh, so this is a project called Project for the Web Implementation and a few little features in here that are worth looking at. Uh, so we've got a, a timeline on the top. Uh, this is effectively uh, a project lifecycle. We've kept it really simple in our demo environment here. Uh, initiation, delivery, close, and benefits. Uh, and you can actually set up some criteria against each of these stages before you move from one to the next. So in most organizations that we work with, they tend to have deliverables that are required for each stage before they can move on. Uh, it might just be as simple as a checklist. Um, do you have resources agreed? Do you have budget in place? Do you have a product mandate? Or whatever your checklist is, uh, you can set those uh, criteria up and then have, if you wanted to, uh, an approval. So you could run a, uh, run an approval, submit that um, to a governing body or PMO or whoever uh, to say, I've checked it, I agree, move it to the next stage. And then the system can automatically move you through to the next stage and you keep a history of, of who approved it and when, um, and in this case, how long you've been in your current stage. So there's a whole audit trail that goes behind all of that. We've set up some additional stuff in here, like additional metadata. Um, you can make these forms absolutely configurable, customizable. It's entirely up to you. In terms of the schedule, I mentioned this previously. You saw a screenshot. Uh, so we can have grids, boards, timelines, charts, people, goals. Uh, this is a fully interactive planning tool at this point. So in here, I can add uh, new tasks. I could right click and do a new task here, insert task above. Uh, or I can have a look at the details of anything that's going on. So if I click on the information button for current state workshop here, I can see all the details relating to that. Uh, I can set effort, completed and remaining. I can add dependencies in here. So, you know, there's a finish to start relationship uh, with lead or lag between this task and a previous one. Um, or I can add my own bespoke dependencies and the system will suggest how this might be linked. Uh, I can also add attachments and in those attachments it can upload a document and you can connect stuff together and, and yeah, have a look at all of that. Uh, you also get a task history in here so really nice you can scroll back to the beginning of time since this task was created and see all of the changes to it uh, since then. So you get a full audit trail against all of your tasks. Uh, you can also do uh, some more bespoke things so uh, before we move on to that apologies uh, board views so in this example, we've set up you know, sprints and we can move activities between them and you can progress them. Uh, it's the same plan, by the way, as we saw in the grid. There's no, nothing bespoke in here. It's all the same plan. Uh, and ditto a timeline, if I just zoom this out a bit, you can see there's a Gantt chart that again is uh, fully interactive. So I can extend or sort of decrease durations of things and um, any linked activities will, uh, will flow through. Um, more bespoke stuff, if you wanted to capture risks or issues or changes, you can do all of that in here as well. Uh, so if I want to see integration with existing systems, this is a risk that we've logged, I can click through. We've, uh, in our example environment here, also put in some custom buttons, you know, turn this risk into an issue or pro promote this risk to my program. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of capability in here, uh, programs I've mentioned, um, you can set up specific entities for programs that will allow you to have program level risk logs, issue logs, and you know aggregate the projects together that belong to it. Uh, you can do some ideation in your project requests area, so you can pull together uh, a, for, a, a forum for people to submit their requests or ideas and um, score them and rank them and give you a bit more detail. Maybe even build in some resource requirements to say this is roughly what it needs. So a whole bunch of capability here. Uh, there is also reporting, so if you wanted to, um, we've just built these in Power BI and embedded them straight in the app, uh, but there's a whole bunch of reporting that you can build on top of this. Because it's built on Dataverse, you can aggregate all that data. It's all interrogable by Power BI, which is really cool. Uh, so this report takes a second to load. Uh, it's pulling quite a bit of data together, so just give this a sec. So 
So this is a portfolio summary report. It's just going to show me some summary information, how many projects, how many risks, dependencies, and so on. Uh, and then all of the detail of the projects in my portfolio. And we've built this in just to have some tool tips as well. So if I wanted to see a history, uh, I can see the history of how this project has gone over time uh, for overall time, cost, and quality. So loads of reports um, available there. I'm not going to dwell on that uh, anymore. If you want a more detailed, in-depth uh, view of uh, either the out-of-the-box planner or the uh, accelerator that we, we're showing you here, the Planner Power App, more than happy to do that. For now, though, let's um, just go back to slides. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about a day in the life. Um, what can we do using Planner and Copilot? Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to do a, a little bit of plan creation. I'm going to uh, create a new plan. I'm going to do some detailed task planning. Uh, yet we'll share the slides. We'll share the, the recording. You'll get a, a copy of that, Tracy. Um, we'll do some detailed task planning. We'll share it with the team. We'll gather some progress. Cool. Uh, so a few planning scenarios. Uh, so we can uh, define work to achieve our goals. So I've got just on this screenshot <clears throat> a prompt that I'm going to use for Copilot here. Um, this prompt, sorry, I've skipped a slide. Uh, this prompt will be to... Uh, build me a project. So I'm just going to come off these slides for a second. Uh, it's going to build me a project uh, for the design and build of a new electric bike codenamed Operation Velodrome, and it should have a deadline of the 19th of November 2024. Uh, and I'm telling it that I want to include some summary tasks for initiation, design, build, test, manufacture, and closure with some tasks against each of those summary tasks. So I'm giving it a very specific prompt about what it is I want it to achieve. And that's kind of key when you took when you're using Copilot is to be as specific as you can uh, about what you're after. If you give it some uh, personas or you tell it who you are, or you give it some more background, the more specific you can be with Copilot, the better the result you're going to get in the end. So bear with me one second whilst I uh, just pull out my prompt. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go into um, Planner here. Uh, this is still a preview feature, so um, just bear with me while uh, while we do some stuff here. Uh, so I'm going to create a new premium plan. Copilot is only available in pre premium plans, uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, Operation Velodrome, we're going to call this. I'll pin this one, and I'll just create my plan now. So this will just do a new blank plan, uh, and it's going to create it, and it's going to call it Operation Velodrome. So you can see here, it's now given me, well, it's still going. I'll give it a second, been a bit keen. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll give it a refresh. Okay, here we are. So uh, a new blank plan. Um, this does require you to have the uh, Project Plan 3 license. So again, uh, bear in mind if you don't see Copilot, that will probably be a reason why. So it, this is an add-on license. If you're using Planner with premium features and you have a Plan 3 uh, license, you will get that. So I'm going to uh, just paste in my prompts there. Build a project for the design and build of a new electric bike codenamed Operation Velodrome. Uh, with my deadline uh, and I'll tell it to do that and hopefully if it's playing ball today um, we should get some some planning in place here <clears throat> okay it's telling me it's created a project named operation velodrome uh, I don't know what it's done but it hasn't done that here yet Hmm, okay. Like I said, preview feature, bear with me. Let's ask it again. Uh, 
Okay, so let's uh, let's do this freehand. So add tasks for uh, the design and build uh, build of uh, a new electric bike. Um, include summary tasks for initiation, design, build, test, manufacture, <clears throat> uh, and closure with uh, tasks for each. Try again. There we are. Okay, so um, what it's done here is it's followed my prompt. It's uh, created my tasks, initiation, design, ta uh, build, test, manufacture, closure, and it's added some tasks into here as well. Um, what it does at the minute is it will pull this information from the web, not from your existing store. So if you use Microsoft 365 Copilot, that can reference all your internal documentation. This doesn't at the moment, that is on the roadmap to do. Uh, but not quite yet. So it's gone away and it's figured out that uh, I'm doing something around manufacturing uh, and it's added some activities in here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to ask it to do is actually um, enhance this a little bit. Uh, so in my uh, build section, I actually want two prototypes. At the minute, it's just one. Uh, I want two. So I'm going to say uh, add two prototypes to the build section of the plan with detailed tasks. What it will do is here contextually look through uh, my plan, recognize the build section, and then it should add in uh, the information required to do two prototypes with the tasks required to deliver those. Remember, this is called Copilot, not the pilot. Uh, so this is just going to give you a starting point, uh, and it's up to you as the, the human uh, to go ahead and make sure that this makes sense, and link in your activities. It doesn't know anything about start dates or or how interdependencies will work in here. So you still have to do that. Um, but as you can see here, uh, it's in my build section now, it's added in prototype one uh, and all the activities required for that. And then prototype two and all the activities required for that. So really good, it's given me a good starting point for my project. What I might also want to do uh, is uh, actually state some goals that I want to achieve for this particular, um, this particular piece of development. So planner and project for the web gives you the ability to create goals um, where maybe you've specified what you want to achieve in your business case. So here, I'm just gonna ask it to uh, create me a goal uh, for this new electric bike, uh, achieve a range of at least 50 miles on a single charge and link a couple of tasks to that. So what it should do here is create this goal in the goals area, find the tasks that I've told it um, achieve that goal uh, and put a link in for me. So here we are, uh, achieve a range of at least 50 miles on a single charge and it's uh, added in the tasks that I asked it to, uh, which is great. So now, as soon as I start completing uh, these tasks, my goal will start to be uh, achieved. Uh, final thing I'm going to ask it to do, um, I think there might be a, a risk on my project. Um, I think there's going to be a risk uh, around the, the production. Uh, so I'm going to ask it to uh, try and mitigate that a little bit for me. Again, put in some, uh, some assistance here to help me think about what mitigating actions might be. So I'm going to say add tasks to mitigate a risk of production line equipment not being ready for the trial runs of the initial production run. Um, we'll see how, how well it manages this. Um, what it should do uh, is go through here uh, and in the build area, it should say, I'm going to put in some tasks that will uh, make sure you're ready for your production line equipment. Uh, what has happened previously, though, is it uh, gets into a bit of a loop and it just says it's crafting. Um, so bear with. Please note the preview uh, button up here. Uh, it does say this is still a preview piece of uh, piece of functionality. So this may or may not complete. Uh, 
Uh, I think in this case, it's just going to uh, just going to sit and spin. So we'll uh, we'll park the the demo around the copilot piece there for the moment. Uh, so you hopefully got a bit of a flavor of the sorts of things that uh, a copilot can add in. Uh, Microsoft are adding in loads of new features before this goes uh, general availability in September. So lots of the skills, as Microsoft called them, skills um, that are going into the rest of uh, Copilot for M365, they're looking at adding some of those across to the planner Copilot. Uh, at the minute, this is fairly on rails. It will do a certain amount of things. Uh, it won't go beyond that. It won't look into your organization and find context for, for what's going on there, uh, not yet at the very least. So um, we'll just park that there and let me go back to presenting uh, this. Uh, so I've shown you a couple of tools. We've been through some of the prompts. Um, why, why might you want to do this? Well, what's the point of uh, work management or PPM management? Well, there's lots of different reasons why you might want to um, consider uh, implementing uh, enterprise planning tools like this. Uh, maybe you've got uh, too many tools and you want to consolidate them, or you've got too few tools and people can't work the way they want to work. Uh, maybe they're not fit for purpose at all, or maybe they can't integrate into your uh, other uh, tools within your ecosystem. Whether it's finance or uh, resource or whatever you use, maybe there's no integration points. Uh, maybe you have no ability to support decision making for things like resource capacity and demand. Absolutely, the enterprise work management side of things can help you with that. Uh, or maybe you can't prioritize your pipeline and you, you've got no visibility of um, how important things are or no scoring mechanism for that. Maybe your reporting is very manual and you need to take some of the pain out of moving diamonds in PowerPoint boxes to the right every month. And, you know, there being, that being out of date as soon as you've finished it and published it. Uh, maybe there's no governance around uh, planning mechanisms or there's no tools to support good planning practices. Uh, or perhaps you're just planning in silos where people are doing it in an Excel spreadsheet or in a PowerPoint deck and it sits on their OneDrive and you've got no visibility of that data. Or it could be that uh, actually you don't know how things interrelate. You don't know how one project being uh, slipped will impact on uh, other projects that may be waiting for outputs from it. Uh, or perhaps you don't have an ability to uh, capture progress in your organization and know when stuff is done or whether it's uh, achieving uh, on track or not. Perhaps you can't track your costs or you can't join your costs, your forecasts, your actuals all together under a single banner. Uh, or you've got no method for um, controlling your risks, issues, assumptions, and aggregating all of those in a simple fashion. Um, so there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might be looking at, um, at work management or people project uh, management tools. Uh, and Microsoft has an answer for all of these in either the out of the box um, planner tool or in the planner power app that I gave you a very brief demo of. Uh, so in the enterprise work management space, uh, as I said, we have accelerators that enable you to get this spun up really fast. So where you might have out of the box capability for project management and task management, we can help you layer on things like capturing status and history and timelines, uh, pipelines, uh, read, snapshotting, the whole shooting match. So please do talk to us uh, if you're interested in uh, exploring that in a bit more detail. Uh, where would you start with implementing this? Uh, so with CPS, we do uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So we do a uh, project for the web, planner, um, either the native uh, or the planner power app. We do some of the more established older systems like Project Online. Uh, we can sort around Power BI and Power Apps, um, Power Apps with both model, model driven apps or uh, extending that out into Canvas apps to um, do a whole bunch more sophisticated stuff. Also, automation uh, around you know things like Power Automate, where you can move data between systems. Um, we can help you there, and we have a, a strong history of doing that for other uh, other customers. Uh, what else do we do? Well, we have a standard uh, implementation cycle. So it could be that we work with you on a fixed price, fixed outcome, um, stage-based delivery, um, or we can uh, work with you in a more agile fashion if you perhaps uh, want to come up with MVPs and then deliver stuff really quickly and then 
you know, actually work in an agile fashion, we're more than happy to do that as well. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, if you're interested in something a bit more bespoke, uh, we have extensibility examples for other customers that we can share with you. Uh, things like pipeline management. Uh, we just finished a project for a, a large government body, uh, building them a bespoke um, power app that integrated with uh, the new planner. Uh, and what it did was it enabled 30,000 users across their organization to go and grab data uh, and submit ideas for new projects or submit ideas or requests for work. Uh, and it effectively was a, a branching decision tree. So they filled in a couple of, um, couple of forms, couple of boxes, and the system then adapted to ask them more questions depending on how they answered. So uh, perhaps they started asking, I need a new laptop. What it would do is it would uh, ask them and gather the right details and then route them through to creating a new service desk request so they could get a piece of equipment initialized. It also enabled them to answer questions about creating a new piece of work and then it would help them size and scale and risk it uh, and then ultimately push it through to Project for the Web uh, for a controlled startup for them. So lots of different um, examples around managing a pipeline there from lots of disparate systems. Uh, we've also done stuff around project governance and assurance and making sure that um, you're in control of your portfolio. Uh, and you're putting in the right stage gates and you're getting notifications and people know how to submit uh, and they can request changes when there are um, changes that happen through through their day-to-day -day life. Um, they know how that impacts on baseline and they can request an uplift or a rebaseline, a whole bunch of pieces uh, of automation around that. Uh, and then similarly, things like approval. So uh, if you do have a need to say, I don't know, I need a, an uplift to my funding, uh, we've built automation tools for other customers that will enable you to submit those requests, have them approved, uh, and then send that uplift over to finance. Or in one example, uh, we've actually uh, had to change the budget in a finance system after approval as well. So loads of examples there. Um, and then, of course, if you want to uh, work with us in any way, we have proof of concepts, we have fixed price deployments, we can do very bespoke stuff tailored to your requirements, and there are even pilot programs um, that we can help get you on. We can see if you qualify to get some funding from Microsoft uh, around, uh, you know, in this case, it's uh, project and Viva goals, uh, so joining strategy to delivery and making sure that things you're delivering uh, actually uh, move the needle on your strategic objectives. So lots of ways you can work with us uh, and we are of course on any framework you can think of. So uh, if you do want to engage with us, there are there are methods to do so. So um, over to you guys, I suppose. If you have any questions, um, I'll take a look at the Q&A now, um, see what questions have been asked in there. Uh, let me bring up the correct window we are. Uh, okay, so uh, can you have a daily task that repeats every day that you tick off each day to show the line manager the tasks completed each day? Uh, you can. You can put through um, repeatable tasks. You can make sure that um, that is every day. So if you did something in Outlook, for example, or in To-Do and you said this is an everyday task, it repeats, uh, you can absolutely pull that through to the plan of you. Yep. Um, Will the slides be shared? We've covered that. Uh, something has come up. Will we get an email for the recording? Yes, you will. Um, two, two raised hands. Um, Safi, have a question. If you want to, uh, I'm not sure if you can come off mute. Um, you can, you can try. Um, or probably a better way to ask the question might be to pop it in the uh, in the Q and A section. Uh, or Ayaz, I think you have a question as well. Please uh, submit it through the questions space and uh, I'm more than happy to answer it that way. Oh, uh, a new private message, let's see. Uh, Okay, you've been uh, unmuted if you did want to ask your question, Ayaz.
Nope, okay, might just be a, a hand raised in, in error. Um, so finally, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Um, there are some links that will be included in the in the wrap up here. Um, if you go to our website, though, we have a whole bunch of case studies available um, about our good work with other customers. We have a, a very full roster of um, upcoming events, both in person uh, and webinars, and we uh, constantly produce new material through our blogs as well, uh, whether it's technical or consultancy related. Uh, we're producing lots of good content up there. And finally, uh, if you did want to uh, get in touch with me, if you did want to connect on LinkedIn, there's the uh, the QR code again. Feel free to scan. That will take you to the CPS. You can add me on LinkedIn, uh, lester.lovelock at cps.co.uk, if you want to email me as well. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for attending today. I hope you found it really useful. Uh, if you did want to get in touch, you have lots of different ways of doing that now. Um, thanks again.